Do you think the experience of awe pretty much always makes you feel like your sense of self recedes and then you feel more of that connection with the oneness of the world? Is that kind of intrinsic to the experience of awe? The way psychologists characterize awe, it, it does tend to be. A part of the experience of awe is a sort of literal or metaphorical vastness that you encounter. And so you're really seeing yourself as a very small uh, part of that, um, where the boundaries between you and that aren't going to be the salient part of the way that you're thinking. Um, I think what's important there, though, is that it can be metaphorical vastness. So you might have an experience going to the Grand Canyon or a really dramatic mountain um, where it really is literal vastness. But you can also have it, I think, in, in the sorts of cases that you describe, or even just thinking about uh, the way in which your own experience might just be sort of one dot in the space of all possible experiences that humans are having right now. All of those more metaphorical notions of vastness can also have that kind of consequence. Because it makes me think, I mean, thinking about all of the environmental problems that we face right now, and it seems like there's this huge need to have some sense of connection to the planetary well-being. And I'm wondering if there's some way of tapping into this experience of awe that would motivate environmental work, for instance, environmental activism. I don't know. Exactly. I think that's um, <clears throat> why more people should be out there, you know, and, 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 and flirt with the, the wild, essentially, you know, because I think that's a disconnect that is going on uh, in our lives and in our, mm -hmm. is that we just forgot about, not all of us, but a lot of us, just forgot about our relationship to nature, you know, that we are actually, yes, we feel really small when we look at the vastness of the universe, but we are carrying the universe within ourselves. So there is, you know, you are made of stardust, right? I mean, you are, and those stars existed before the sun was born. So we are really old people, you know, we are like five billion years old. And, and I think this sort of connectivity is awe-inspiring, but we lose that because so much of our lives are being sort of diverted into the more pragmatic, the more material, and then we forget that, you know, all of this is only possible because there is a world out there that gives us the energy and the supplies that we need to sustain this kind of lifestyle, but it's not a forever game. You know, and, and, and we need to kind of wake up to that. Yeah, and, I'd worry if we left it purely up to the subjectivity of people's hit or miss experiences of awe. You know, I think it's kind of awe inspiring what human beings can do when they all get together and decide to do something collectively. You know, that is another example. And with the climate problems that we're facing and the environmental problems, we can look at the great successes we had in the past, you know, I mean, it might have been a single issue uh, situation, but you know, we, the, the global community got together about CFCs in the ozone hole, it made a decision, it passed some legislation, everybody agreed to b abide by it, and we're fixing the ozone hole. So it's not impossible, but it does require supranational organization and trust. And that is quite awe-inspiring when it happens. Although I think this is a good example of why you actually want, I think, the right dose of awe, right? We've been talking about all of the wonders of awe and, uh, and so on. But when it comes to everyday practical issues like getting dinner on the table at 7 o'clock or trying to coordinate around some environmental issue, you also need the very pragmatic sorts of reasoning. Um, if you think about something like curiosity, you know, we can, we can say how wonderful it is to be curious. But at the end of the day, we don't have the resources in terms of our own time and energy and ability to learn and so on to explore everything we might be curious about. So curiosity has to be very, very selective if it's actually going to be a good guide to our action in the world and to learning. And I think that's true for wonder and it's true for awe. So while, while a bit maybe is going to be great for this problem if it helps people appreciate our uh, interdependence with the natural world and so on and our relationship to other people, um, I think you also don't want it to go too far. Right? I think the right level, the right, you want the right dose of wonder in order to actually uh, have effective action.